welcome to a special edition of Karmakaze Moto, folks. My name is Justin, and I'm excited to announce that I'll be doing my very first ever giveaway. And this is perfect timing because uh, the channel, the Karmakaze Moto channel, is just about ready to tip into 10,000 subscribers, so it's time to celebrate. So what better way to celebrate than a giveaway and somebody can win something? What is that thing? Well, you could win a Tutorial Brand Automatic Chain Oiler Workshop Manual and the actual chain oiler that goes with it to include all the accessories and components to get this installed on your motorcycle for your custom application. Pretty cool. It even includes a big bottle of chain oil. Now, I've got one for me. I'll be installing it on the Royal Enfield Himalayan, but I've got another one for you to possibly win so that you can get it installed on your Himalayan or your other motorcycle, whatever that might be. Now, speaking of any other bike, Tutoro sends a wide array, array of uh, components and pieces so that you can install this on any bike, right? So don't worry about that. Just follow along, I'll show you how to do it. I promise, I will not take any special trips to the hardware store, I will only use what Tutoro sends. Now, if you don't know much about these things, here's the basics. This is a reservoir, you fill it with oil, and then while you're riding down the road, oil is being delivered from the nozzle here through a tube to your sprocket, and then through centrifugal force, the oil is being distributed onto your chain. Unlike other chain oilers, you do not need to connect to your electrical system. You do not need to run any vacuum lines to your carburetor or to your air intake. This unit is completely autonomous. It works off of vibration, very simple. Up in the top here, there's a calibrated weight. It rests on a spring and a shaft that runs down here into a multi-stage valve system that they've worked very hard to get just right, to design it just right. And then there's a control knob here. So when the bike vibrates, the whole valve system, can we call it a valve train? I don't know. It'll uh, supply a continuous perfect flow of oil to your sprocket. Pretty neat. When I get done with the video, I'll explain to everybody how to register to win one of these for yourself. I'm not quite sure yet, but I think it'll have something to do with uh, Instagram, using the Instagram app. Um, I've been using that a lot more lately. Some of you already know that. You've seen my recent posts. So I'll have that figured out. By the time I get done with installation, you'll be confident to install one of these yourself, and you'll know exactly how to register to win one. Again, I'll ship it anywhere in the world. More than happy to do so. Let me show you the parts and then get right into the installation. So first things first, you've already seen, we've got the reservoir and the valve system for the chain oiler. You will definitely be needing that. Additionally, with the kit, you get a big bottle of chain oil. Pretty cool. This is kind of an interesting one. You may not think it's a big deal, but what this says to me is that Tutoro really cares about their product and their customer experience. They don't have to supply this extra bottle, but they do, and it's kind of nice. So this is just a spare bottle so that when you travel, you don't have to carry the big bottle of oil, just fill that up and then hit the road. So they give you that as well. This right here, I gotta tell you, it's not going to come in the kit that I'll be sending you if you register to win a chain oiler for yourself. Um, but this was supplied in my kit. So I've got this aluminum guard. You can also get these as well. Again, it won't come in the kit that you can register for, but everything else will so just a little nice aluminum guard there you will of course need some flexible tubing now this tubing is a little bit special because it actually some of the tube has a wire that runs through the tube that'll help you uh, flex the tube and bend it and direct it a certain way and then inside this bag is a little single nozzle there you may want to use a single nozzle to deliver oil to one side of your sprocket. That's perfectly okay. If you have to do it that way, that's fine. So they supply one nozzle. Basically, you insert the nozzle into the hose up to that black line there and then set the end of the nozzle on your sprocket. So flexible tubing and a single nozzle. This here they call the Helix. So... You would insert this end into the tubing and then you can flex and bend this any way you need so that you're able to 
have a nice sturdy supported rigid uh, end of the line to then deliver oil onto your sprocket along with the helix you may want something like this which they call the twin feed nozzle so instead of that single nozzle that I showed you in here this is a twin feed so uh, these two pieces this is probably for sure what I'll be using on the Himalayan so you'll be getting that you you will get a collection of zip ties these are a fairly nice quality zip tie and you get quite a few different sizes here now you just may need some of these little skinny ones to get this hose say attached to your swing arm and get the oil directed towards your sprocket uh, these would do that do that job just fine you got some little thicker ones and some really thick ones these believe it or not you can use to actually fasten the chain oiler to your frame there's some brackets i'll show you in a second of course you'll get the manual you gotta have that and there is a lot of information in here but it's not complicated the text is fairly large and you pretty much you can skip to an area that you need and then start working on your bike in fact uh, here's a little example of one way of running the hose and then a certain type of little bracket here that you can purchase from tutorial that doesn't come in this kit it's not needed yeah lots of good information good manual get that off to the side there they supply you with this green bag well why do you have an extra spare bag with nothing in it it tells you right there but i'm gonna explain it pretty simple after you install this when you go to wash your bike if you're going to be using any solvents or cleaners anything like that you can put this over the top which protects it while you wash your bike some cleaners may cause damage to this clear surface they might make it foggy uh, they might get in here and start eating away at seals you never know so better to just protect it and the green bag helps you remember to do so you could of course use any bag you want but they give you one they also give you a magnet now what the magnet is for is to lift the weight so that oil can flow very easily into the tube so you, if you listen you'll probably hear this click so what's happening is there is that the weight is attracted to the magnet it lifts up all the valve which lets oil flow through if you have air in the line if you don't do this you won't be able to get the line kind of primed so you do this you get the oil to flow all the way back to your sprocket and then you start riding your bike pretty cool these are little clips and they're black which is great i've seen other people do installs with white clips and it looks kind of goofy so we've got some black ones basically your hose runs right through the clip and on the back of each clip is double-sided sticky tape so that you can stick these clips to your swing arm or your frame and then you can run your hosing through the clips tutorial also supplies uh, alcohol a little alcohol wipe so that you can clean the surface before sticking these so that's really awesome and then this right here this is the nuts and bolts of the whole operation quite literally this is very important this is how you'll get this thing installed on your bike let me open this up and show you what's inside in fact i'll get a couple of these things out of the way okay i just dropped a little washer there so first things first they supply you with an allen key or an allen wrench and then you have three pieces of a bracketing system let me just set those down you have this primary bracket, an L-shaped bracket, and a curved or articulated extension. And by the way, this primary bracket has a very soft, grippy pad on the bottom of it. And then they supply a number of nuts and bolts. These are, of course, socket cap to be used with that Allen wrench. Got a washer stuck to me. And then the nuts these are all stainless steel everything is stainless steel these nuts here are lock nuts and then you've got some little lock washers let's put all the nuts and bolts aside 
Now you'll see me do, do the installation, but here's the basics. This main bracket this is kind of the key to getting things started. Anywhere on your frame, say this is your frame, you can stick this bracket on here and then you can use your zip ties to zip tie this firmly in place. Using these and using this also, you can get so many different configurations. You may want to put this on first and you needed to bring the oiler away from your frame, but then you needed to bring it down because the frame rising up to your seat is kind of in the way. So you can bring this out and down and you could either just get this bolted on right away or you could mount this on and then you'd be able to mount this this direction or face a different direction. So just these three little pieces basically allows anybody to do what they've got to do. Now, if needed, Tutoro does have a couple of other longer arms and pieces just depending on the bike. You go to their website, you'll find out more of what you need. And of course you look at your bike and you try to kind of think about it and figure it out beforehand. So this is pretty simple stuff. It gives you the opportunity to figure things out for yourself just for a few minutes and have fun with it. I mean, if you ever like doing Legos or whatever, this is easier than that. But you do get a few minutes of uh, figuring it out and it allows you to do a lot of custom installs. And that's it. So aside from this here, you too can register to win one of these Tutoro automatic chain oilers. Let's get into the installation. Okay, the Himalayan is in place and it's on the center stand. I had a couple tips for you that I was thinking about. One is uh, lay something soft out, whether it's a rag or a towel, and place all your components that you know you'll need. Another thing, if you have a little camp stove or camp burner, like something for backpacking or anything that can heat water in your garage, uh, that's pretty handy because you'll need some hot water to heat up and soften your zip ties. And the very next thing I want to do is show you the placement where I'll be uh, that I'll be using for the oiler on the Himalayan. So I think I'm going to use this part of the frame right here for the passenger or the pillion peg. And we're going to get this mounted just about so somewhere somewhere in here. What happens if you get this installed and then suddenly you have pannier racks that are gonna go on and you find out that your racks are in the way of the oiler. Well, have no fear. I've got some uh, racks and I've got the panniers actually. If you plan on having the pannier rack, make sure you get it either mounted in place to begin with or hold it up in place so that you have a good idea of where it'll be positioned. That way when you go to put the chain oiler on, you know exactly where to be. If you're too far forward, it's gonna hit the rack. Uh, if you're too far back, you won't be able to get the cap off. And then you've also got this little adjustment nozzle to worry about. Of course the nozzle, let's say it's behind the rack, but it's not touching it and it's not even close. Well, you would still be able to reach there and adjust that nozzle. To, so that's not too big of a deal. Okay, so that's kind of a concern. Uh, if you're following along with me, you won't have to worry about it too much. I'll have it all figured out for you. And then let's take a closer look at these bracket pieces. Now I'm probably just gonna end up using only this primary bracket. I'll mount it to the frame and then I'll get the chain oiler mounted on just like so. Basically just like that. This bar right here is curved. So depending on how high I go, I might have the bracket mounted on an angle, which would angle the oiler sort of backwards that way. Well, that's easily remedied by just putting a little twist on this tab. I'll just bend it forward just a little bit and that'll get the oiler nice and straight up and down. For someone else, you might need to use these other pieces. So I'm gonna throw this together real quick nice and loose, just so you can see what you're able to accomplish. Look at all this range of motion, up higher, down lower. You can have the oiler angled from zero to 12 degrees, that's it. Outside 12 degrees, it will not function. So as long as you're within zero and 12 degrees in any way, you're good to go. Okay. 
But with these other components, you can really fine tune your position. You know, maybe you end up with something where you, you want to, you're on a bar like upside down and on your bike, if there's nothing here in the way up at the top there, you might be able to get this positioned in well. So pretty handy. A lot of options with these brackets. Again, I'll probably only use just this one, which is great because the fewer the parts, the better, the more stable. The other thing you have to worry about is depending on where you position this, make absolutely certain that your swing arm, your chain, your chain guard, uh, when your shot gets compressed, make sure nothing can come up and hit the oiler, which would not happen in my case. There's plenty of room back there. Uh, what I'll do next is kind of fine tune exactly where this bracket's gonna be. And if I need to put that little bend in there, if so, I'll record that. All right, I decided to uh, go ahead and put a little twist on here. Now, if you have a Himalayan, you don't have to do this. Uh, you could just follow along with every other step and you'll be perfectly fine because even if you leave this alone, the oiler is still almost all the way upright. Not quite, but it's within the uh, specifications in the manual. So it's, it's within 0 to 12 degrees of an angle. So the oiler will still work. But I've got the vise right here. Uh, it's pretty simple. So I just decided I would go ahead and do this. And I'm trying to uh, protect the metal a little bit. No sense in getting it all scarred up. Twist a little bit. Not much. Hopefully, hopefully I did not overdo it there. Oh yeah, that looks pretty perfect. Just a tiny little twist there. You want to try to make sure, you know, get your pliers down all the way to here. That way the twisting action happens close back to uh, this part of the bracket instead of twisting right through the middle here where then this doesn't sit flush against the oiler. All right, it's time to get down to business. I used one of the alcohol wipes to clean this part of the frame. That way this was nice and grippy and really did not want to slide. I made a mark on here so I know where to place it. And then I'm looking at this tab and I'm looking at this uh, tab that sticks out here. I don't even know what that's for yet. Uh, and I'm just, they're not lined up, but they're parallel. So I'm just making sure that that looks pretty good. And they're only parallel because I put a little bend on my tab here. And is this zip tie cooling down? Yes, it is. Let me grab a hot, soft zip tie. And clearly I have got to do this fast. And I apologize if my uh, hands or arms are getting in the way. As you can see, I, I put the head of the zip tie on the back here, so the strap pulls through that way, and then when you look at it, everything's nice and clean. Um, all right, as you can see, I've got the zip tie snipped in the back. They've cooled down, they're nice and tight. This is really firm now in place. Uh, I can see where somebody might wanna wrap black electrical tape around here, uh, not only just to give it a little bit more reinforcement, but just to kind of cover up these little areas so mud and debris doesn't get stuck on there. Uh, you might want to think about that. Somebody might even want to paint this bracket black so it ties in better, but my uh, pannier bracket, or yeah, the pannier bracket is going to be in front here, so you're not really going to see that anyway. Uh, what I get to do now is, uh, well, like one of the most fun moments, a pivotal moment, I need to get the chain oiler actually mounted on here. So what we'll need is uh, this socket cap bolt right here. You've got to have this little star washer. It's kind of a lock washer. And what else? Oh, you need one of these lock nuts, eight millimeter lock nut. And this washer is super important. This goes in between any metal pieces. If you're going to have another component to the bracket, you've got to have this in between there, or this can go in between the bracket and the chain oiler. It always goes in between the components to keep them from wanting to uh, rotate slide around. So, got the bolt. That's going in. Got the washer. 
that's going on the back. Then the oiler, try to do this and not be in the way of the camera all the time. Here's the oiler. Let me let that rotate out of the way a little bit. Now I've got the little nut to go on the back. And I'll just try to get it finger tight and stay out of the way of the camera if I can. So because it's a lock nut, you can only get it on so far. Then you'll want to take your little Allen wrench that's supplied by Tutoro. Get your wrench on there and just tighten everything down. Okay, once I feel that it's getting snug, I'm going to get this positioned perfectly upright. Nice and true. And that looks good. Looks really good. And then let's wrench this down. That star washer is going to compress just a tiny bit, so keep that in mind. You can wrench this down fairly tight. But you don't have to go nuts. I'm leaving it right there. Nice and solid. Okay, now that I've got the oiler in place and you can see how that's done up, it's time for me to move down by the sprocket and get the actual feed nozzle in position along with this helix coil. I'll be using the twin feed nozzle along with the helix tube here and this just inserts right into this end. Well, this whole time I've been pretty well focused on utilizing the rear chain guard as a mounting point for the nozzle to deliver oil right onto the sprocket. Um, it's right here, and if you get the oil line behind the chain guard, well then you're protecting not only the chain and the sprocket, but you're pr protecting the uh, oil nozzle as well. Uh, the only problem with that is that I want to use this twin feed nozzle here, which is really long. Now, if you get that nozzle in position, then you can see here's the end of the nozzle, then I've got this helix here. So all this is really far forward of the chain guard. So in order to actually utilize the chain guard, I'd have to bend this back towards the chain guard. And then of course the oil is coming in from this direction back here. So I'd have to have another bend coming back this way or run the oil over the top like the hose and plug the hose in back here. Either way, I'm having to uh, double back and then double back again. So that's not really gonna work out so great. And as you see here, where I have the uh, helix and the nozzle, it works out pretty good. Now this is actually one of the methods that is uh, provided in the manual. And you can see where the nozzle is up here on the sprocket. And then as the wheel turns, I'd have complete oil delivery all over the sprocket on both sides. But I do want to show you real quick an alternative method, and that is to use the single feed nozzle. And you get that here into your hose. I won't stick it in quite all the way. And then uh, right along through here in the hose, there's actually a piece of flexible wire. I will, let me bend this just like that. So what you could do is run your hose along and then have this behind here, right on top of these bolts on the back side. You could run the hose right up on top of the bolts. Really nice position. And then look at that right there. Uh, hopefully the camera can see it. But the nozzle is, is touching the sprocket. And I could slide it forward a little bit if I wanted a better position. Anyway, you get the idea. So you get this fastened in place and then you just bend the wire, get the nozzle to actually touch the sprocket there. So I think that a lot of people would want to use this method. And I may end up in the future uh, switching over and doing this. But for now, I'd like to have the ultimate oil delivery with oil on both sides of the sprocket. Now let me show you the bend that I have here. See it just snakes a little bit. I've got about an inch. Uh, an inch or you know two plus centimeters there of a shift over to the side and then of course this needs to angle down now even in the manual it describes you need to have this angle down let's say you did something and it was straight 
well then when the sprocket's going through here, there's a lot of downward push, it's gonna move a lot. But if it's angled, then as the sprocket comes through, it doesn't push it anywhere, it's just gonna run through. So this is what I'll do, and hopefully you can see these bends pretty well. And the uh, next thing I need to do here is get this plugged into my hose, because it would be pretty hard to do that once it's all fastened in place. So I've got that in there nice and tight. I'm not going to do this on camera, but I'll get this uh, fixed into position with a couple of the fat zip ties. I'll get it in position, get it bent, and then I'll kick the camera on and I'll show the camera underneath so you can see it a little bit better. Here we are, i got the zip ties in place and the nozzle is in position. Now um, just a little tip, you need all your hands to, to pull these zip ties. so. Get the helix in place or your hose, whatever you're doing. Get a piece of tape on here. Just anything to kind of hold it. And your zip ties, don't forget, heat those up in hot water. And they're really thick. If you use these really thick ties, uh, they take a little longer to heat up and get flexible. So just put it in the hot water, boiling hot water for quite a few minutes, whatever you gotta do. Uh, I'm sure 20 or 30 seconds is fine, but um, it takes a lot of heat to cause any damage to these things. So don't worry about it. Just leave them in there, get them hot and flexible. Get your tape on here, then zip these things down as tight as you can absolutely get them. And as they cool down, they will tighten up. Um, and then uh, when everything's tight, you can then go and make some fine adjustments. You can bend the helix a little bit just in case your nozzle isn't touching the sprocket. So I would say don't get hung up on the fact that the nozzle is a little bit out of whack while you're doing this. You'll never get it done. Just Get it as close as you can, strap it down, and then make your fine adjustments to get it in place. And you see I've got mine in there and both sides of the twin feed are touching the sprocket. Hopefully this is focusing well enough. And you see when the wheel spins, there's no major drag on the nozzle. It doesn't bounce around or anything. The sprockets on the Himalayan have all this, you know, hollow space, so that makes it a challenge to get the nozzle to, uh, you, you've got a, a very small window of opportunity to uh, get the nozzle on there where it's not too close to the teeth, but not too far away either. So that's how I've got it. And next thing, I need to run the hose along. One clip is in place and I had some tips for you. First, uh, put the clip over the hose first then you can slide the clip get it in position then peel the back off and then stick it that'll help you out a lot um, don't forget to clean use those little alcohol wipes or if you have your own alcohol something to clean the surface really well and then up here i'll be running the hose along this chain guard so or the chain like slide one way that you can keep the hose in position is it's a little trick that uh, Tutoro shared with me. You make a loop like this, but don't do it the way I did it. You put the loop around your hose. So you make a little loop around your hose. I'll be redoing this. And you're gonna get it cinched down to a nice tiny little loop. I'm not gonna go all the way because I need to do this over. And then you slip the end right through here, or you could do it on this side, whatever you wanna do. And then the end of this zip tie that's back there, get another zip tie snip it so that you've just got an inch long something like that and then zip zip this over that end of this one back there so then it can't pull back through and it's not going to rotate and pull back through because the hose itself will keep it from rotating uh, it's not a really super tight secure fastener it's just gonna keep the hose in position up close against that guard there you have it the completed oil line from nozzle all the way up, mostly hidden out of view, goes down there and then up to the oiler. Let me show you the other side in case you just need help figuring it out. So I've got a zip tie here and one right here. And then There's a clip 
right there, which is one of these. It's just stuck right on the back of that flat tab. Don't forget to clean it off really well. So the line runs right here through that clip and then comes down. It's not touching the chain. There's enough slack and play. Got a couple zip ties right here just to kind of keep it in place from hanging down. I did find that uh, doing this method, it's better to use a thicker zip tie because it'll be um, stuck in between the chain guard and the swing arm a little bit better. This one does keep the hose in position, but it's, it's you know, it's, there is a lot of play there. Whereas this one, nice and solid, not going anywhere. So consider that. And then also, uh, I was looking in the manual, and there's a drawing that specifically shows that even though you have a zip tie coming around this helix, you want to have another zip tie going the opposite direction. Now when you get it on there, that little zip tie, it might get cocked off on an angle or something like that, but it doesn't matter. It's really uh, holding everything firmly in place a lot better with that there. And this is nice and solid. I mean, that's definitely not going anywhere. And then this, of course, is flexible, so I don't want to push on that, but it's not it's not moving when the chain or when the wheel is running or rolling. So everything is totally situated and that leads me to the very final step which is to fill that with oil, get it primed, and run it and do a little bit of adjusting so that I don't have too much oil being wasted. All right, this is exciting going through each step in the manual and the next one is to remove the cap followed by filling the reservoir with oil to the fill line which the line is on the back but it's roughly right about here the fill line is just below the cap Let's see if I can do this without making a mess Your spill over that's great and then we need to put the cap back on now this cap has a little breather hole so you may want to uh, point that in a direction where it won't get caked with mud and either way every once in a while like if if you feel like the oiler is not working check that hole make sure you're not getting a vacuum created in there so I'm gonna put my hole facing uh, kind of forward towards the frame a little bit. All right, cap is on. Now the manual says to rotate this valve. Let's see here, place the cap, rotate the flow control valve four turns counterclockwise to open it to the prime position. Actually, it says anti-clockwise, but I'm in the U.S. We say counter, so there's one, two, three, and four. So that's in the prime position. And then it says here, place the magnet on top of the cap and observe the oil flowing through the oil delivery hose until it has reached the nozzle. I can set this down here. I've got my magnet right here. So the magnet is there. Oh, I see the oil. Check it out. Perfect. You know what? That's like that's actually sort of exciting. <laughs> All right, so that's going now. In my case, the oil's coming down, but it has to kind of go up a little bit. But as we know with fluids, if this is higher, then the, the uh, oil will continue to kind of make that climb there. Oh, here we go. So exciting. There it is right there. Oh, wow. OK, 
Okay, right there. It's going through the helix. Right there. Let me put the camera down here. Let's check this out. Because I think you're about to see some oil. Look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, so now it's dripping on the floor. That's not beautiful. Uh, now we turn it back in. And I'm just going to turn it all the way in until it's closed. And then the instructions say to back it out. So that's closed. I feel it just slightly bottom out there. And the manual says it's uh, bullet point number nine. Open the valve again one to 1.5 turns to set a flow rate. Oh, and the magnet comes off. One more magnet. And... Let's just do one for now. I'll do a little bit and then we'll test it out and see if that was enough. And the instructions say to go for a short test ride. After 20 minutes, stop, take a look at your chain, adjust the flow rate if necessary. That's cool. Well, I'll actually be doing my riding tomorrow. So what I am going to do right now for the video's sake is uh, I'll kick the bike on, I'll put it in gear, we'll let that wheel turn. I know I'll hear from somebody about running your bike in gear while it's up on the center stand, but guess what, that's what we're gonna do here. talk about the giveaway and give you those instructions plus uh, I'll do just a little quick kind of follow up with what I did here and give you a couple tips and reminders and then um, I'm really looking forward to having people uh, register to win your very own tutorial brand automatic chain oiler well there you have it that is the tutorial tutorial installing an automatic chain oiler on the Royal Enfield Himalayan so whether you buy one for yourself or you win one, hopefully, you'll be able to get it installed on your bike with no problem. Keep in mind that you may want to customize this process. You could use additional zip ties. You may want to incorporate some black electrical tape. Uh, you might want to put some padded double-sided tape in between that helix and your swing arm. That'll give something for the helix to bite into and kind of keep it in position while then you put your zip ties on. I think that would be great. So lots of things that you can do here. I myself may make some changes later on, but I wanted to be sure that you could see how to do it without any hassle with only what was provided in the kit. Now, speaking of the kit, if you wanna win one for yourself, you're gonna to have to do three things. Three very simple, very fast things, but you must do all three, do not forget. So let's put it up in space here. First item, you need to subscribe to Tutoro on Instagram, and I'll give you the link down below in the comments and in the uh, description of the video. So the first thing, subscribe to Tutoro on Instagram. Second thing, subscribe to Karmakaze Moto on Instagram. And the third thing, down below in the comments, you must comment with a hashtag Tutoro. Hashtag pound sign Tutoro. If you don't do that third item, I'll have no way of knowing that you are actually registering to win. Even if you are a subscriber of Tutoro and Instagram, if you don't comment below with the hashtag Tutoro, 
I won't know that you do want one of these oilers. That's what you got to do, all three items. And uh, as far as tutorial is concerned, on Instagram, you're not going to get blasted with a bunch of junk. They don't post that often, but when they have a new product, you'll be the first to know. I'm sure they'll put that on Instagram. Pretty sweet. Uh, as far as the Karmakaze Moto on Instagram, well, that's my stuff, and I keep it fun. Last weekend, Dee and I went for a flight uh, up into the Alaska range. We actually landed a little Cessna 185 as passengers. Uh, we landed on a glacier right up there near Denali, the tallest peak in North America. Uh, and I got blasted in the face with a snowball. So that wasn't too fun, but it was funny. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that I'm putting on Instagram. So don't worry about following that. Uh, everybody that comments below, I'll get all those names. I'll put them in a hat or a barrel or a dump truck. That'd be cool if I got that many people. I'll put them all in a dump truck. I'll draw the name and whoever I draw, I'm gonna check and make sure that you did in fact follow Tutoro and Karmakaze Moto on Instagram. If you did, well then you're the winner. And I'll ship it to anybody, anywhere in the world, you can have your own chain oiler. So that's the details, that's what you gotta do. And uh, you'll read in the description, I'll give everybody mm, a week, possibly two, to do this, okay? So you can look down uh, in the description of the video for more information. I will also put uh, links to the tutorial website and the Instagram feeds, all that will be in the description of the video and possibly the top comment on the video as well. That's basically everything, but right now what I'm gonna do is hop on the Himalayan back over here. It's ready to go, ready to ride. I'm gonna hop on there, head down the road and do the fine tuning and adjustment on the chain oiler to get the, the oil flow just right. If you're interested in that, keep watching. I'll have a little bit of that video footage. Otherwise, the thing is working. You saw the install. You know how to register to win one for yourself. And with all that said, we're kind of basically done here. So I wanna thank Tutoro a ton because this is really exciting to do my first giveaway. And uh, it's been great working with them. And then I wanna thank everybody else for watching and thank all the many subscribers. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're just about at 10,000 subscribers. If you know anybody that you think would be interested in this channel, by all means, share the channel, encourage them to subscribe, and then hopefully in the future, I'll do some other giveaways so people might have the opportunity to win something cool. I don't know. Either way, I'll definitely have some great rides coming up. And that's it. I'm signing off. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Be safe. And as always, enjoy the ride. has not shifted. Nothing's moved. That's all good. Uh, I started off with this turned out one and a half times. And then the uh, oil line, the hose, just, nothing has changed. That all looks good. And then the helix has not budged. And the nozzle also, which would have been the biggest concern, that has not moved. And then I can see from looking at the chain, I definitely see oil. And I can see oil on the sprocket. But not an insane amount. And I visually I don't see anything that's wanting to drip right away. Can you see me? Let's get in here. It's like a, I don't know, selfie. Selfie with my chain oiler. Okay, um, I think they're right. When they say to start off with one and a half turns out, that seems almost perfect. Also in the manual, it talks about that you may see a little bit of oil splatter, which is to be expected, and that is okay. What you don't want is such heavy oil that runs back onto the actual riding surface tread. But if you have any of this little splatter, the manual says that that is okay. Just keep in mind that conditions can change. The hotter it is out, the more uh, fluid, you know, the, the more viscous or the viscosity changes in the oil, so it may flow more. And then if it's cold, it's going to thicken up a little. Uh, they also say if it's raining, of course you have rain, water moisture on the chain, you may want to turn this out a little bit if it's raining. So lots of little things to learn in the manual. Everything's looking pretty good for me so far. And 
that's it. I know I said it was already done before, but now I'm fully done. You got to see how this was working out and how I adjusted it. Again, one and a half turns out. That's what the manual says. That's pretty good. I think that's a good way to start. And uh, I'll give you one last little view around the area. Can you even see a mountain up there? It's all smoke. We've got a forest fire nearby. Take care.